My name is Joseph Farron Christmas, uh, 23 years, United States Marine Corps, uh, retired gunner sergeant, uh, infantry unit leader. During that time, uh, saw combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. So my father was a Marine, uh, and then he was a police officer, so it was kind of that perfectionism uh, that he instilled in me, and I just want to be a Marine. And so at 19, I raised my hand and, and joined, joined, uh, joined the Marine Corps. In the military, you know, quick obedience to orders. And, you know, and, that, and that's what's instilled in everyone. You know, you put your, the mission first, regardless of whatever else. But mental health, no, nobody thought about that. Nobody cared about it. You know, you did your job. Yeah, you, know, you get blown up in the training, that, you know, doing training with explosives. Um, you know, you take a little concussion here and there, if, you know, depending on the job, but suck it up and you go on, you complete the mission. Nobody talked about it, nobody cared. 2005, our, our base was blown up by two 10,000 pound VBIT IEDs. Uh, we were within 70 meters from where the explosions were, and uh, I was knocked out. It affected me. For the longest time, I mean, I'd always have visions and, and dreams and like, out-of-body experiences sometimes when I'm sleeping and even during the day just the flashbacks you just learn to absorb that stuff and you notice know, set it off in compartments where it actually gets you is when you go back home he came home from his deployment to Iraq I knew at that point that he probably had a TBI because he'd been blown up there were three separate explosions and already I was noticing some changes in behaviors um, I actually got to go to a class that explained the process of a TBI and some of the side effects, and he wouldn't hear it. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm going to deploy. I'm going. I'm doing it, you know, mission first. I knew it was the TBI and the PTSD that was causing these things, and his way of dealing with them weren't healthy. I didn't know what PTSD was. Uh, I don't think that I even understood that till probably three quarters through my career. And at that time I said, you've got to do something. You've got some stuff going on and you need to get some help. And initially he did. And he put a little bit into it. And so finally it came to like, well, maybe I do need to do something. Uh, when I kind of realized that it was, I was about, yeah, close from losing my family. I love my husband more than I can explain. He is my soulmate. He is my second half. And it was tearing me apart. He was destroying himself and he didn't realize it. And it was killing me. I missed, I missed him. He was my best friend. I was losing him. And I knew why, that's the thing. So through the help of my therapist and my wife, uh, and a lot of digging, I found Hopeway. April 1st. I checked in here to Hopeway. Angry as a hornet, hard. Uh, even some of the therapists, counsel, I'll tell you, I was just a, I had just walls up. And, <sighs> these are happy tears. I was just glad to be in a place where I had people that had worked with vets that understood what the hell PTSD was, understood why I was smoking these things and drinking and, and whatnot. I did the EMDR training um, with Ross. Unreal. From the first session, um, the feeling that you get, like, it, my mind was back in these vivid dreams of uh, shitty places. And you get those feelings, but as you talk through it with a therapist, it's replacing those shitty feelings with something of good feelings. And as we started going through it and talking about each and everything, it got to the point where my mind was still seeing it, but from a 50,000 foot level. I wasn't there. I was watching everything, still see the moving parts. It's like watching, you know, drone video. You know, 
you know, physically there. It's like having that someone on the outside of that deep hole just to throw the rope down to pull you back out. Hopeway taught him how to use some tools. It gave him some freedom back to be able to like enjoy life again. It gave him hope back. You know, when you sit there and people say, what's wrong with you? How, you know, tell me the worst way, and you can't. You don't know what to say. You have it all in here, but you don't know how to say it. And it allows you just to dump it. Dump it into some artwork or dump it into digging in the flower beds of the garden back there, planting something, you know, music. You know, I was able to, you, with the drum, doing the drums, you can beat the shit out of the drums. John didn't care. Because of Hopeway and the therapies and the resources, you know, I've got my guy back. I've got my husband back. I've got most of my best friend back. We're, you know, we're still working. Obviously, it's going to take time, but, you know, it's salvaged our marriage. I mean, with 25 years, I didn't want to throw it away. You know, I had hope, um, but hope was given that back. It saved my life, not giving my life, it saved my life. I know, I know I'm in a good place. You know, with the tools that I was given, the ability to communicate and actually say what's on my mind in a nice manner. You know, if something's bothering me, I, I can able, I can identify the emotion and not just say it's anger. Because that was one of the big things when I got here. But I am so thankful for Hopeway, so thankful for my wife, my therapist, for providing Hopeway. This vet program is awesome because it takes care of people like us. <laughs>